already. Oh, back to the hamstring. <laughs> I'm telling you that, like, massage that I got, it was great and all, and then I got on the plane and my neck was oh, all like, yeah. I'm just kidding. Ow! My quad. Ow! Hey guys, it's a beautiful day in Southern California. I don't know where I parked. I really don't. I just walked around a little bit. I think I'm over here. Find out. Right over there. Right. I haven't bought myself a purse in seven years. Karen got me this for Christmas. It's really nice. It's from Guess. It's suede and taupe brown. I really like it. You, I'll show you guys later what my other purse looked like. It's like it looks like shit's gonna fall out at the bottom and it looks like the straps are about to just rip apart in any second. Sorry, I had to grab a handful of pills. I'm <laughs> dropping them. You have prep life. Yeah. Look familiar? You guys haven't seen Emily in a while. Hey guys. She was in my last video. I like this lens. Yeah, it's so nice. Is this a new camera? How you got your... Uh, yeah, so cute. Yeah. I got everybody, no one else has theirs yet except for Emily and I, but we all got um, California necklaces because we're like California sisters. Yep. <laughs> okay. Friendship necklaces. Okay, we're gonna get coffee. Got a couple of things at the paper stores, but a new candle. Each plum, it smells like grapefruit. I wish you could smell it, but all the other candles in my apartment are blown out. So this one, I'm excited about it. Go ahead and try this cheeseburger pizza from Bite Meals. Looks delicious. 13 fat, 16 carbs. It's only 16 carbs and 31 protein. This is like a good higher fat, lower carb little meal. Oh my God, it smells like a cheeseburger. It's so good. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you what my other bag looks like that I've been using for seven freaking years. It's just like, it's fine. I just like, it's just so old. Like this is just very ratty and I just don't care about bags and Karen nicely got me a new one. So thank you, Karen. I'm gonna throw this one in the trash. I'm heading into Hollywood. I have to first get my hair done. Second, I have a meeting with someone who's very, very important. With all the business stuff I have going on in 2017, I essentially just want to really focus on like my brand and like what you guys are getting from me from my YouTube channel and then my podcast. Like I need someone who's a mentor and like a coach to help me with business stuff because it's the same thing as having a coach for fitness. You can do stuff on your own. You can learn stuff on your own. You can go through the trial and error. You can wing it. But without the expert advice of someone else, you're not gonna get to where you wanna be as quickly or as efficiently as you would if you were to have the expert advice from someone else. So that's kind of how I'm comparing these two things. And with my business, that's something that I'm really focusing on. And I wanna be a businesswoman and I want everything to be successful that I'm doing and I want to reach more people, I want to inspire more people and I want guidance on the best way to do that. So this year I've hired a coach, a business coach. He's amazing and I'm just really excited about it. So I'm gonna head into the city and I'll show you guys where I'm going. I never asked how to suck I'm here to see Lewis. I remember when you first started following me and I was like, that's super cool. <laughs> well, I, think, <laughs> I don't yeah, fangirl I over followed, many people, but... I think you followed me first. I did. And that's what... I, and I look every day to see who follows me. If you zoom in, you'll see... You just click it. <laughs> you probably won't be able to see this. She's so tiny. <laughs> what are you, 5'0"? No. I'm 5'3". You're no, be no, she's 5'2". Yeah. Let me know why. Okay, ready? That's cool. I love that. It's cool, huh? It's like an awesome decoration. Mm -hmm. The wall of greatness. The wall of greatness. Love that. Yes. I feel like I'm in your podcast right, right now. Right now. <laughs> this, this is set. a school of greatness room. Oh, the we zoom was on like super hard. We usually have the camera set up. So right here. But Tiffany's got, yeah. Two right there and one right here. Yeah. I just finished up my meeting with Lewis. We talked about a lot of good stuff. It's great. I'm How do you feel? Excited. I feel really good, really excited about 2017. Yes. I have a lot of things are coming that I'm working on and I'm spending a lot of time. Like the fact that I'm even here right now just shows that I'm investing in my business mm. and I find it really important mm. and I need a mentor. I was telling them it's kind of like having a coach for fitness and you can do stuff on your own. Like I've spent a lot of time learning on my own, but like yeah. if you don't have someone to keep you accountable and someone to kind of like guide you in the right direction, you're just kind of like, yeah. moseying around and yeah. not like taking it seriously so were you an athlete or no 
Um, I was kind of an athlete. Okay. Um, I did sports, but I was kind of mediocre at them, and that's how oh. I got into the gym. Gotcha. So I fell in love with the gym more than I was mediocre at sports. I mean, as a, for me as an athlete, I don't want to take over your channel. But no, for no, me no. As please an athlete, take over. As an athlete, the only way I became able to achieve my athletic goals was through coaching. Right. That's the only way. So when I retired from playing football, and I was trying to figure out life and like how to make money and do the next thing and reinvent myself... I was like, well, I'm not going to try to do this on my own because in sports, whenever I tried to do it on my own, I messed up. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me find the best coach as uh, in business and life, relationship, like whatever I was yeah. trying to learn. I was just like, how do I find the best coach? Exactly. So for me, I don't do anything without a I coach. I found the best coach. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but I don't do anything without a coach. And even my fitness, you know, I'm constantly... Even though I can work out with the best of them, I still like to have a coach to yeah. keep me accountable, to keep me on track. Yeah. Every um, great person has a great coach. Like, it. even Mr. Olympia has someone who coaches them. Even though they know exactly how to work out, they've been doing it for years. Exactly. And when they win, they don't say, I've got this. Like, yeah. you don't need to coach me. I'm good this year. I'll do yeah. it on my own. They no. find someone better. Exactly. Right? And they try to find, like, every coach they can in every area specific. So make sure you have a coach. Invest in yourself. And the fact that you're doing it, You've been doing it for your health for a long term, but now you want to grow your business. Right. I think it's brilliant. So, yeah. I'm so, excited. I am very excited to be here. So, we're going to be working with each other for the next year. I'm super excited about it. And if you guys don't already follow him, you definitely should. He is my favorite podcast that I listen to. I've talked about him a couple of times on the channel, but I'll put his information in the description box. If you guys don't know him, you definitely should. So, I'm going to head home. I'll catch you guys in the next clip. All right, y'all, this is look the best wa looking waffle I've made in a while. So this is the one carb waffle recipe. It's always, always, always in my description box in the YouTube box below. Um, but I topped it with some apple butter jam. So it's just jam, it tastes like apple pie, and then some mini chocolate chips at the top. So I'm gonna devour this. So this is my physique update right now. You guys are looking at it. This is what I look like this morning. Haven't eaten anything, haven't drank anything. I weighed 134 or so this morning. I asked you guys on Twitter how, like, what kind of topics you wanted me to talk about with my physique update because you guys have seen me in the past competing in bikini competitions, getting leaner, focusing on doing that. Now I'm powerlifting. I've been eating a little bit more. Obviously, I've gained a little bit of weight. Um, and I want to talk about how I feel about it, um, how I think people should go about feeling about it, and just a couple of topics that I wanted to cover. So a lot of people have been asking why my body has changed and if it has changed because of powerlifting and that's not the case be just because I'm powerlifting doesn't mean that my body looks any different it's not the style of training that's that's making me like look bulkier or whatever people decide to say about the way that I look right now I personally like how I look right now whatever people decide to say about how I look right now it's not because of the way I'm training I've been training for seven years now and I've been doing a combination of like higher rep lower weight stuff, lower rep, higher weight stuff throughout my entire experience. And that has changed my body and that has what shaped my body, not necessarily like the style of training that I've been doing for the past like four or five months or so. Um, it's just because I've been eating in a surplus, guys. I would still look the same if I was doing a bodybuilding style training. Um, my muscle growth might be like a little bit more if I was doing strictly bodybuilding or if I was like focusing on like hypertrophy, muscle growth type stuff. Um, I'm not really right now just because with what I look like right now, I don't really want to gain much more muscle on my legs. I'm good with where it's at. Um, I do want to gain a little bit more upper body muscle, but for the most part, I've taken years of training and I really like where I'm at and I want to improve as much as I can, but I don't need, I don't feel the need to like put on much more size, but that size that I'm putting on now isn't from me getting bulkier from powerlifting. It's just because I've been putting on some more fat because I've been eating more in a surplus. My macros at the end of my prep for my bodybuilding competition, they got down really, really low. And a lot of you guys saw that. Um, I got my resting metabolic rate tested. My metabolism was really slow. The resting metabolic rate is basically what it takes for your body to exist daily. So mm -hmm. this 1066 right now is what your body would burn if you didn't get out of bed, right? You just stayed in the cot yeah. all day. Below normal. Yes, I am. And that's by 22% right now. Dang, that's a lot. With that, the way that I went about my off season was that I just ended prep and I didn't take the time to properly reverse diet. I have done that in the past and it went well and I stayed pretty lean, but I just didn't feel the need to continue to stay in a caloric deficit or to continue prolonging a dieting phase. I just wanted to um, 
enjoy myself a little bit, take the mental stressor of tracking everything so strictly and so perfectly, um, and just kind of like run with it. And I did some intuitive eating, and I definitely like naturally am an overeater. And when your metabolism is already really slow, and then you add calories really quickly, you gain weight kind of more quickly. So that's what I did. Because I've spent a lot of time working on my own physical and mental health, I'm comfortable, I'm okay with where I'm at. I really truly am. I am body positive regardless of what I look like because I've taken the time to mentally just be happy with whatever I look like on the outside just because I know that like, I feel really confident within myself who I am and what I bring to the table and like I know how to manipulate my body to get it to like a place where I feel a little bit like better or more lean or whatever you wanna call it but it's taken time for me to get body confident, guys. It hasn't been forever. If I remember the specific point where I was just like, you know what? I think I'm finally comfortable with enough with like the amount of muscle that I've built and the physique that I've built um, over the years of training where I could like kind of maintain for a little while and feel completely okay with it. I didn't feel that urgent need to like change because I wasn't comfortable and ready yet. Like I'm comfortable, I've done the work and it's not to say that the work is ever done but I feel like I'm okay to kind of take a step back and not feel that urgency. Like I need to be looking like this now because I've built that and um, I feel really comfortable and I feel really happy with myself. And yeah, I put on 20 pounds since my last, since my bikini prep ended. And I say a solid 10 pounds of that was necessary. Maybe like 12, 15 pounds is necessary. Like the last five probably wasn't really, but I don't, it, it's not like stressing me out or anything. I did say that I was potentially gonna be cutting for this meat, but with the holidays, not that I was like overeating during the holidays or anything, I kept things pretty moderate. Um, but I don't, I, I decided that I didn't want to focus on cutting. I truly, truly do want to focus on building my metabolism up. So the next time that I do really cut for whatever it may be, another bikini competition maybe, um, I want my calories and I want my metabolism to be like a burning furnace. Like I want, I want it to build it up. And the way that you do that is slowly add calories over time. And, um, actually track them. It's called reverse dieting. So that's what I'm gonna do after this powerlifting meet or try to do anyway. That's like what my coach and I have been talking about. And I'm really looking forward to it because I want to be one of those people that has like a fire burning metabolism. Like that's my main number one goal. I don't wanna always be going through cut and bulk cycles my whole entire life. I wanna be able to like comfortably maintain with what I look like aesthetically, with how my strength is and with what I'm eating. And what I'm eating right now, it's not super high. Um, my macros are currently around 95 to 100 grams of protein. I'm eating around 165 to 180 grams of carbs or so. And then my fats are between 50 and 60. I kind of like, I'm not super, super strict with them, but I'm like kind of keeping track. Um, I'm not I'm not to the gram obviously, but that's like where they are right now. And that's about like 1,500 calories or so. And it doesn't seem high to a lot of people, but for my, for my body, and where it's at, I need to work from there and then move up because I I'm already I already gained enough weight where I'm good with like the weight gain. Like I don't want to go up any higher, but I want my calories to go up higher. So that's kind of like where I'm at right now. I am 134 pounds. I am five two and three quarters, five three, <laughs> and I'm 23 years old. And this is what I look like right now. I am four weeks out from my powerlifting meet. And um, because of that, I'm just focusing on my strength right now. I'm focusing on getting stronger with the big three. And those are my goals. I kind of just want to maintain my weight with where I'm at. So I'll be in the um, 138 weight class, I believe it is. The next one down is 125 and that's like too far off for me. I don't want to cut eight pounds just for a meet. It's my first powerlifting meet and I just want to do it for fun and to get my numbers on the board, challenge myself. Um, I love challenging myself physically and mentally and that's why I wanted to do this powerlifting meet because I think it's really fun, really enjoyable and I don't want to look back at the end of my life and say, wow, I wish I did a powerlifting meet because I was getting really strong and that would have been a really cool thing to do. Um, I don't want to look back and say, I wish I did that because I'm doing that and I really want to do it so that's why I'm doing it. So let's get back to a few more questions from Twitter. Someone asked if I feel pressured or left out because I'm not starting prep with my friends. So my roommate Karen started prep, Emily started prep. They're both bikini pros and they have a very long and exciting season coming up for them with their competitions. Um, I don't feel pressure to start a bikini prep again. A lot of people have been commenting asking like, when am I gonna start prep again? Like it's time, like a lot of people are doing it. But um, for me, that's not where I'm at right now. That's not something that I feel like I'm ready for just yet because my body's not ready. I need 
time to recover, guys. I need my metabolism to recover. I need the time for my body to just like not recognize the fact that I'm dieting because it's been uh, like years of competing. Um, my body just knows like, hey Amanda, I recognize that you're dieting again. I'm gonna make this the hardest process ever for you. And I don't want you to lose any body fat because I'm gonna uh, try to survive here. And then you with low body fat, you're not surviving. So it just kind of adapts really quickly. And I don't want that to happen again because that sucked. <laughs> it wasn't fun and I don't wanna go through it again. So my body isn't ready for it. I'm not ready for it. I don't feel pressured. I'm super excited for everybody else to start prepping. Like I wanna be prep mom and I wanna help everybody with um, their prep feels and all of that like I'm, I'm excited for them to go through it But I'm not ready for it myself focusing on loving your body for what it's doing versus how it looks I think people really like to see Things that are motivating to them in terms of like getting leaner because they're not lean yet And they want to look leaner and they want to look like this person they want to be that but like That's not all that fitness is and I think it's so empowering to get strong and to feel that power within like your physical body and loving my body for what it can do. It makes me so emotional that I can like inspire someone else to want to be strong as opposed to want to just change the way they look because especially as a female, we're so focused on what we look like and we have such high expectations with social media nowadays and like wanting to look like everybody on Instagram or whatever and with powerlifting, I'm able to show people that that's not the only thing that you should love yourself for. That's not the only thing that you should strive for. Yes, it's a great thing to strive for. I strive for it all the time to look better, feel better. Um, it's definitely a good goal to have, but it's not the only goal that I have and that you should have. I feel like even if you don't want to compete in a powerlifting meet, I feel like it's still relatable to want to focus on your gym performance, to focus on loving yourself for what your body can do. If you want to do CrossFit, if you want to do a sport, if you want to do something that requires your, like you need to fuel your body with food to perform better, I feel like it's such an empowering thing and it makes me have like a better relationship with food, it makes me have a better relationship with other people. And I'm not to say that competing in bodybuilding is something that's bad. Um, I like, follow Emily Hayden on um, YouTube right now. She has a lot of good videos about bodybuilding, bikini competitions, myths, facts, stuff like that, because I do love it and I highly stand by it. Um, I'll do a whole ent entire other video about that. But regardless, I think this whole powerlifting thing has helped me realize that I want other people to feel strong and empowered and not that they have to love their body for what it looks like, but to love their body for what it can do. That's how I'm gonna end the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, listening to me ramble, talk about all the stuff that I'm passionate about, because this is my favorite kind of video, to sit down, in your face, listen to me. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm, I have to go, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. I will be retesting my maxes tomorrow, so you guys will see that in the next video. I'm so excited. I'll talk to you guys then, I'll catch you later.